so we're going to talk about flying carpet and flying carpet is a peer-to-peer -peer decentralized autonomous transportation network. Um, use um, blockchain, obviously, uh, a bit of AI, uh, some VR. Um, so, so it's a lot of busy words. Um, we've got a few uh, proof of concepts. Um, a little bit of my background. Um, so I've got a master in electrical engineering from France, and also um, a master in electrical engineering in, in the state, um, specialized in machine learning, AI, and decentralized systems. Um, that what now you guys call blockchains. Um, um, I've been doing a lot of projects worldwide, uh, different company that I sold, um, all focused on blockchain, AI, and um, kind of like crazy ideas. I want few. Actually, all the accountants I was participating in got very lucky. Um, so the original idea came from the state where I was building a, a swarm of robots on, on the campus. And um, basically, the idea was to build a robot that could learn about the environment. And this was back in 2009. Um, so you could just take pictures of the, the campus and then upload, upload the, camp, uh, the, the picture online, and people could buy the picture. And then the drone could charge himself. Um, that's the idea. So you got like a swarm of different robots that can communicate between each other and then can share information and everything now on a decentralized network, which is the blockchain. Um, so the peer-to-peer -peer transportation system is, uh, is powered by Ethereum, powered by State Channel, VR and AI. And one of the main advisors is Victor Tron from uh, the main developer behind Ethereum, uh, Swarm, and Ethereum Foundation. Um, so the idea is to build a transportation system that everyone can be involved in. Um, so you can use the system, no one can control it, no one can shut it down, but everyone can be part of it and everyone can actually make money. Um, so you've got four different entities in the system. One is autonomous IoT devices, and I'll be talking about drone in this presentation because drone are, drones are easy to understand. And the flying carpet is not a magic carpet. Flying Carpet is a decentralized autonomous docking charging station. And this actually, you can buy the Flying Carpet. So Flying Carpet is just 10% of the idea for the project. The project is a protocol. And the Flying Carpet, you buy the Flying Carpet on Amazon, and you can put the Flying Carpet whatever you want. You can put the Flying Carpet on the garden, on the rooftop, on the car. And basically, the Flying Carpet will charge any drone that pass by, and then you will, you will generate money. So you can be sitting at the office, and then the Flying Carpet app that I can show you off, sta off, off sta stage, will basically tell you, okay, your flying carpet was used 10 times today and you made uh, 15, uh, 1,500 pounds. And same for the drone. So that I'm not planning to build drones. I'm planning to utilize the, the existing market of drones. Like if you have a, for example, statistically speaking, when you have a drone, you never use the drone more than two times or three times per year. It's cool, it's high definition, it's super advanced technology, but you never use it. You just take a high definition picture of the family and then that's it. So what about utilizing this drone? What about renting out the drone for the market? So what, so what I've built, what we built, is a microchip that you can plug on the top of the drone, and then it will turn your drone into an autonomous vehicle. So you just leave the drone outside on the balcony, and when the protocol needs a drone, it will just power the drone, and then use the drone, utilize, utilize the drone. Um, so this is the, uh, the picture of the protocol. Uh, if you guys are a bit uh, technical, um, so we use uh, ZK uh, SNARKs, 2-bit protocol for computational inside the VR engine for building different kind of third-party services. Uh, obviously, smart contract. Uh, we've got different wallets. Um, I will show you. Uh, so this, the, um, this is how I build the flying carpet. They use like uh, Tesla, the same as Tesla battery, uh, Tesla car, and uh, super powerful. You, you have about like at 8,800 8, milliampere on each battery. That gives you a total of 800 watt an hour charging. Um, this is me. Um, you have the video online that you can see myself for two weeks building the smart contract, the hardware and the software, basically building the, the, the flying carpet. Um, and I give a demo. So if you look at the, at the video, then I use this to charge my phone to show you that but the idea is to charge the drone. And the flying carpet use um, solar panels. So you just leave it outside in the countryside, you go somewhere, and then you just leave it and it will be used for charging a drone. Uh, you got 4G power, um, like Raspberry Pi. Um, I'm gonna show you the video. So you put the flying carpet in the backpack, like this. You deploy. 
and you install the different solar panels. Um, you can have more than two, but for now it's just a prototype. It's my garden in Peckham. It's not far away from here. And basically the drone just then has to detect the flying carpet. And what I want to really focus on that, there is no human interaction. So the, the, flying car the drone detects automatically the flying carpet based on the GPS location. And then using reinforcement learning, this is the first, the first third party service that was built through the VR engine. Um, so basically what you do, the, the drone learns how to f uh, land and take off from the flying carpet. So normally after like a couple of times, you know exactly how to land and how to take off from the flying carpet. And the flying carpet is linked to, fl to the, we can show you the app, it linked to the, the uh, flying carpet app and use the state channel for unidirectional uh, transaction. So what you do as soon as the, the drone leaves the flying carpet, the owner of the flying carpet receives um, a notification on the phone saying, oh, you, you made 1.5 E's and the drone as well. But this, the thing is like, we don't know where are the drones, we don't know where are the flying carpets. It's, everything is completely private. So you use a uh, swarm network for doing this. Um, uh, okay, this is a market. We've got like different proof of concept. Um, one is for farming. We're doing biomass analysis. So the drone can fly over the land and analyze the plantation and then give analysis to the farmer directly to the truck. Um, this one is what we're trying to build. So for example, uh, as a power line inspection, as an energy provider, what you can do, you can select your line. So this one is a fake uh, image, but this is the real data on the, on the bottom. So what you can do, you will calculate as a business, you, as, a, as a client, you want to use the protocol, you click, you start the um, flying carpet up, it will tell you, okay, this is uh, about like 16 kilometers of uh, power lines. It will generate about six, 710 <coughs> megabytes of data, average speed of eight, eight kilometers an hour, and you'll be using five different flying carpets, and uh, the business has to pay 82 ETH to participate. This is, if you have a flying carpet, uh, flying carpet, it will, best this, um, will basically tell you Okay, if you place the flying carpet in this location, so if you live in the countryside, or if you live in the city, it will tell you, okay, if you place this, the flying carpet there, you will make 368% more money. And then at the bottom, it can tell you, uh, you'll be generating in this zoom of the screen, 0.2 ETH per square meter, and also uh, 0.001 per megabyte of data generated using the drone. Uh, this one is for business, uh, a dashboard for business. So you, as a business, you can have a fleet of drones and then you can uh, place flying carpets um, along your uh, business and also have drone flying. Everything is completely autonomous and I will explain to you how you ac can actually build application protocol. Um, so that's what we've been f mostly focused is on this one. Um, so basically any developer can build any kind of application. You can be a developer like a real developer or you can just be a gamer and you'll be just if you know the game GTA, you just go to the game and then we have, you will have a drone flying and then you can tell the drone and can teach the drone to do any kind of application in the virtual world before pushing them to the real world. So, oh shit, um, sorry, I'm gonna show you. But what it does is any application, any per a third party service as a developer that you build will basically be tested in a, in a game because you don't want developer to build a terrorist attack or like harming people or trying to uh, kill someone or something. So in order to verify this, you use the game and you do collision analysis to the game. And if the drone passed the test, then the third party service is then sent to validator platform. And the validator, validators board are the one which are based on token economics, so they can stake token, and then they can use to verify what the developer said the drone was supposed to do. And then they just watch the video, and as soon as it passed all the different tests, then the, the, the third party service uh, like this one for rooftop analysis, then it's then pushed to the, the real application, flying carpet application. Um, that's what we are. Um, so in, um, in a countryside, we can do biomass, biomass analysis of a land. We can also, we have a proof of concept in uh, Papua New Guinea where we're doing coconut analysis. We're counting the number of coconut in the plantation, and then we send the data to the farmer. I can show you, if you go online to flyingcarpet.network, you will have access to this information, but you can see the video, and then you can see data being generated, and also the AI, the reinforcement learning, trying to analyze the data to the presentation. Um, we're also working with NGO, like United Nations and all this stuff, to do, like, for example, learn registry, 
or to do a donation on Milestone. So you can calculate, you can analyze if the house is being built and you can donate only the farm when the, the house is being built. And this can actually use a flying carpet as a drone to monitor the, the, the advancement of the construction. Um, so that's a project you can look online, it's called Village 2.0. And what we do, we're using, it's called, it's an ID box, it's a project I built last year. Uh, and it's used by the United Nations and backed by a big NGO worldwide. We're basically placing flying carpet in different villages. And um, each village has a smart contract responsible for the village. And then whatever happened, and if you send a drone from Port Moresby over there, and you try to, do, to go to Lalora, um, if you drive a car, it will probably take you eight or nine hours. As a drone, you can fly, but the drone will have to, to land and recharge itself because it's limited in, in distance and limited in battery. And then every time you charge in a village, the money generated will actually be spread among all the people from the village. Uh, that's the application we have. Um, we can show you, maybe accelerate, yeah, okay. Okay. So, for example, this one, uh, agriculture, you can select the altitude of what you want the drone to fly, you select the flight direction, you select what kind of stuff you want to analyze, like identified paths, and then you click, you select the, the location, this is a bit long, uh, yeah, and select the land, and then the protocol will find a drone that has a spectral camera for doing biomass analysis, and it will find a way to reach destination. If you cannot reach destination, it will try to find a flying carpet to charge and land and leave, and then we'll tell you, okay, you need to pay that much. Uh, okay, this was, I uh, call it a new announcement, but it was from last night, so it's not really new anymore. Uh, something I've been, uh, so I went to the, back to the countryside, to my place, and I, had, um, I have a car, it's a classic car. Um, I own this car for, for four or five years now. It's um, TR6 1976. And what I've done with this one is basically I put the flying carpet on the top of the car. And uh, so what you, what you do if you go to the countryside, you go to your parents or something, and then you park the car, the car could actually be used to charge a drone. And that's what you've got on the top of it. Um, that's the flying carpet. And then you can, uh, you can park and then be used for charging a drone. So maybe in the city, it's probably unlikely because you've got regulation. But in the countryside, it's possible. Um, and this is a video we're probably going to release tomorrow in the newsletter. And it's a new concept that we've been working on. It's called Flying Carpet Nomad. Um, you can go online and check on the flying carpet network and also um, register yourself to your newsletter. Um, that's, that's it. I'm not sure got any questions. So, transportation of goods or transportation of humans, I, I don't want to deal with that. Okay. Um, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I mean, the thing is like, regulation will try to fight, I mean, it's going to come like in five years or ten years. What I'm talking now is like something that's possible right now. I've been proved uh, POC in developing country energy market. That's what we're doing. Um, transportation of goods, you will have Google, Amazon, all fighting each other to try to do the transportation and stuff. Here, I'm more like focused on services that you can actually do. You have a drone, and drone is super advanced in technology, that you can actually start utilizing the drone, but most people don't know how to control a drone, and they will probably have to pay, pass a permit. So what I'm focused on is basically using the AI that has been certified 
the code is open source on the smart contract. Everyone knows what they're actually the job is supposed to do, so everyone can agree, everyone is confident, and it's most it's actually safer to have a drone being piled by the AI that is completely decentralized open source than having human that can have a glitch and do something crazy. Well, yeah, I know, but you still um, it will probably come in ten years. And yeah. What I want to do is now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Questions? One of them. So, so how are we planning to actually use this right now? I mean, there are any drones and uh, doing services. Because uh, your main business is uh, the, the flying car and charging the drones. But no, no, flying car is ten percent of the idea. Uh, flying carpet is a, a, it's um, it's a device that you need if you want to do long distance, and it's also cool. But it's um, <laughs> it, so for example in a plantation, the coconut plantation. If the plantation is more is 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 is, is big and it's got it's longer than six or eight kilometers, then you probably need a station. You know, you don't want someone that get the drone charge it because it means that you have to. Get a salary for the person, and the person this this can actually work 24 hours, 24 hours, seven seven days. So what I'm saying is that um, the, the the focus on this is a protocol, meaning that you empower people to build a kind of third-party services. You also give the opportunity to people to earn money to make a, a good means income from um, buying a drone, renting out, buying a flying carpet, or be a developer, be a gamer, be a validators, and all this kind of stuff. Because uh, we'll, be, we'll uh, publish the white paper soon, but it's, not, it's under review by the lawyers. But we also have the token economics. And the token economics explain that in this concept, you've got four different entities. But then as soon as you talk about token economics, real token economics, then you can add different entities on the top of it that can actually interact, interact like insurance, like all this kind of stuff. Who's going to sell the actual Who's going to sell them? Um, so, Part of the, uh, the money we raised, we're planning to do uh, to build some flying carpets. So probably like about like five, five, two thousand flying carpets. But um, competition is hard in the hardware, so it's a business that you don't want to put yourself. So um, flying carpets is a good brand at the moment, and probably China will build some cool flying carpet in six or a year time. We should be more happy with that. I'm very happy because then you can actually plug into the protocol. But um, if we can be the first one to build a flying carpet, it'll be cool. But I cannot guarantee anything, but will, that's something we're getting to announce soon. Yeah. yeah. Cheers, thanks. Uh, that was a really good presentation. I love the jacket. It's, it's ah, great. cool. My jacket, yeah. Cool. <laughs> um, I was, uh, I was in, um, in South America, so it's a bit cold here. <laughs> Welcome to London. Yeah. Um, got a question for you. Are you. I like the way you talk about checking first, looking for collisions, terrorism, that kind of thing. And consider privacy as well, and people spying using the drones for... for it's not process. possible. It's not possible because any application being pushed to the protocol have, have been verified by the, as a consensus. So it's not possible. It's actually safer to have a protocol like this than have someone controlling drones. And um, so for security... Um, security um, Aspect, I, I cannot really talk about it now, but that's something we've been working on and um, probably going to announce after the, the lawyers. Yeah. Any more questions? What is the oh, we also got a video coming from the guy over there. I, I saw the guy, he's been working on the video. What's the team? The team? Yeah. So it's about 10 people at the moment. Uh, we've got um, Max over there, also the guy working on uh, some design there. We got, um, yesterday we had more people, so about 10 people, yeah. So we got uh, three developers, uh, developers for myself. Um, if you, uh, AI, um, if you know Python, uh, if you deep in C Sharp or like C++, I'll be doing the interview, and if you want to join, it's cool. <laughs> cool. Is there any new technology related to no patent. No patent. Yeah. If you want to copy, you're welcome. Good, Good luck. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the The assembly chat decides to create China. China. Yeah, 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 China. I'm, I'm sure, I mean, they will come up with something, but the thing is, like, the power of decentralization. You raise money, you beat 
try to be fast. And um, we've got some stuff coming. I mean, this is kind of the high, the top level of the iceberg, but the iceberg is big. But uh, <laughs> uh, we've got some stuff that is more technical that we've been working on the technical white paper. That's what we're going to publish the marketing white paper and not the technical white paper because as to be, I don't, I like to make a difference because most people talk about the white paper is not a white paper, but in the technical white paper, some stuff probably going to be patterned. Yeah. Yeah. Any more questions? Okay, I'll have one more. I great presentation. Um, obviously, in the initial parts, you mentioned GPS. Um, when are you going to the phone? Yeah, yeah, that's what we 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 signed something yesterday. I mean, we're in the process of signing something. Oh, cool. yeah. signature's gone. Very good. Uh, the thing is, like, it makes complete sense because um, GPS are not accurate. Um, and um, uh, something I haven't talked with Ryan, but I've been thinking about something with the flying carpet that'd be cool with phone. But um, uh, it makes complete sense. So basically, what it does at the moment, you you have a GPS location, and GPS can be. You have, you have trees or you have buildings and it's not really a crate. And it's also like by 20 or 50 meters. So what you do, you use the, vi um, the video to do like, to actually analyze and how to land. Like this one could be a nice flying carpet. Like, uh, it's the new version of flying carpet actually. Of course. <laughs> um, so I come from a, a wheat farm in Australia, so it's obviously a commercial space defined by, um, I guess, you know, fences and borders. So you put those beakers around be very accurate. That's what we're doing, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So something like photo would be a perfect yeah. way to get to the masses, not on the grid, so to speak. Yeah. Great, it's good that you've signed. Cool. That's a great question. There's one more question over here. trying to build a drone delivery, I'm sure they will try to fight anyone to do the same. Um, but a decentralized system, um, so if you build a decentralized structure, normally no one can actually stop it. Um, you can get arrested because you're doing something which is bad. But if you can prove that what you're doing is good and it's being verified, I'm sure that the government will be more confident with something which is open source and completely transparent than having a centralized big corporation that can try to do drone, drone deliveries between A to B. And this actually happened a couple of days ago. The biggest co company worldwide, Facebook, you won't trust it, but now they're in big trouble. So, because it's completely decentralized. So, I think decentralization is a big opportunity um, in the coming years, especially now. I mean, we're talking about Facebook, but Google is even bigger than Facebook, and Google has Android on the phone. So, we, we I mean, there's stuff coming that'll be pretty bigger. Sorry, the open question for that one is, uh, all right, so if it's staying as a hobbyist, uh, so... Okay. It's, not, it's not obvious. Um, but for businesses, for small businesses, I understand that uh, there will have to be like a leap for uh, mass adoption of technology like this. Yeah, yeah that's, that, that's true. I mean, you know, uh, this kind of stuff, you, you need to have like uh, um, uh, enough number of flying carpet, enough number of people buying drones and plugging into the network. So that's what the main what we're doing. We're partnering with clients. So we've got like big companies that want to use it. Because as a big company, what you have to understand is like, even if they know that the business is going to be destroyed by the drone, they need to hire people that understand how to control a drone, how to understand how to analyze the data. And for them, it's another business. They don't want to be involved in that. They just want to save money. 
So that's why we got clients um, that we primarily like going with the clients. But the drone can actually be owned by individuals, not by the client. But the, the service, the people that pay for the service, then it's the client. It's uh, like big companies. Yeah. Cool. Yes. Cool.